Hey everybody, Desert Rambler here, back at headquarters. And I wanted to take this opportunity to go through some of my overlanding toolkits and tubs and what I carry. So today we're gonna to be looking at my overlanding toolkit. So let's jump right into it. So it goes without saying that toolkits are a highly personalized item because your vehicle and what kind of wrenches, sockets, etc., that it needs, it's gonna vary somewhat from vehicle to vehicle. And what happened to me, of course, is you know, you want to pack virtually everything and anything for any contingency when you first purchase a vehicle. And I used to carry much, much more. I will say this has been one of the most difficult tasks to decide what to take and it kind of depends a little bit how much your fear level is and what you feel like you can repair out in the trail so this may vary again depending on where you go what climate certainly what vehicle your technical knowledge whether you travel with a bunch of people uh, so this of course is my kit for a 93 yj so I've got some personalized items here uh, that, you know, wrenches that are for specific things. Uh, but the uh, main thing is, is to start learning your vehicle. And as time goes on and you take more trips and you get confidence in your vehicle or what areas are going to be the least amount of breakdown items, you, know, you can maybe start pulling tools out. And with a two-door Wrangler, you're always trying to figure out how to get more space and reduce the weight. Uh, they are very squirrely at high speed. And uh, the more weight you can keep out, the better without compromising, you know, your toolkit. So I'm just going to go through each group here and explain what I have. Uh, at the end, I will ask you to um, add anything you may see that uh, you think I should have or that's redundant or I should take away. Again, toolkits are an ongoing process. So I certainly welcome any uh, comments on that. So in the screwdriver department, um, you know, I try to have one of these uh, ratcheting type of universal uh, screwdrivers, as well as this little 90 degree guy here. And you know, this can take care of a huge, huge chunk of what you may need. Um, you know, a little lacking in the strength department. So you still want to have some traditional screwdrivers and some that can fit into tighter areas. So I do carry, you know, a smattering here. In the um, hammering department, and I've included this punch here because I didn't know where else to put it. But, you know, I used to carry a two-pound sledge. Uh, sometimes I still bring it. Sometimes I don't. I and mean, that's one area I'm not sure of, you know, should I continue to do that? I mean, this is a pretty big ball peen hammer here. If you had to beat out any body panels or do anything, um, you know, work on U joints, what have you. And then just for smaller, I've just got this kind of little kitty ball peen here. Definitely recommend some kind of punch. This can be used for centering holes, uh, trying to get two pieces to mate up so you can get a bolt in. Okay, moving on to uh, pliers here. Uh, I think you should have a good needle nose. This is a really long one uh, for, you know, you drop something, you're reaching down in. Um, just traditional adjustable pliers of various types. Here is a uh, fuel line a pincher there. Uh, a couple small needle nose adjustable over here, ratchet department. So after doing some research about, you know, the different types of universal ratchets, I really wanted to get one of those. I wound up with this one here. <clears throat> and I think this is a really great product. It has a quarter, three eighths and half inch all on one wrench and the little hole to put in your bits over here. 
that took a lot of weight out of the toolkit. So I do still carry a big breaker bar. This would be for any suspension items, things like that. A uh, small quarter inch here. And then I've got this snap-on deal. I'm not sure exactly what they call it, but there's the part number. This lets you put a ratchet on multiple, or a breaker on multiple different sides. And it can get you into some weird angles that you normally, you can't get it. Sockets, so I have ditched almost every socket. I used to carry a full socket kit. And what I did is went online and fortunately there were some people that had posted all the hardware that's on a YJ. Now, maybe for your vehicle, someone has done the same thing, but it was really handy to be able to see what sizes were on there. And I went through that. I looked at the items that were possibly things that I could even attempt to fix out on the trail and wound up selecting the sockets I need. Most of these are for suspension items, but there's a few in particular that are for certain sizes, you know, down in the engine bay, what have you. And I've even thrown in one of these kind of somewhat hokey uh, universal, just in case there's something else, you didn't have it. You never know, it might help you out. In the um, tire wrench department here, I use one of these adjustable. This slides out here to be quite large and uh, it works great. All right, let's move down here to cutting. So I've got a nut splitter here, um, a, a file, which you know you never know where that would be handy. Uh, hacksaw, again, this is to keep it small and light. Here's an Irwin utility chisel. Now this is nice, it's still in the package because I've never had to use it, but it has a very thick, thick blade and it's sharp on this edge and the top. So this could be really handy. You can hit it with a hammer. Uh, so it could be anywhere from, you know, splitting kindling at your campsite to, you know, hacking off something on your vehicle. So also moving on, tubing cutter here. Now, I used to carry a bigger one, but Mainly this is for if there's um, something that you can find or use. Maybe you have to splint something together with some tubing uh, that you find. Or um, if there's brake lines or anything else on the vehicle that you know need to be cut cleanly. And some of this, of course, is for emergency situations just to get you off the trail. Um, that's what this is for. And, you know, you got to think about some of these items may not just be for you. It may be to help somebody else out on the trail. So if you run across somebody that needs a certain thing, um, again, never had to use it, but I just think it's a good idea to have one. Um, tin snips. And now this year, I've kind of hemmed and hawed about keeping it in or not. Uh, it's a one-handed wire stripper. And... Yeah, I have other wire strippers that I'll get to in a second on my electrical kit. But they're the kind where you've got to kind of hold the wire with one hand and then and then squeeze and pull with the other. And, you know, if you're working under the dash or something, maybe you've got some wires that you cannot make a mistake. You've got to get it right the first time where your wire will be too short. Um, then this, you know, makes a perfect uh, cut every single time. So... Over here is something pretty new for me. This is the Aries Universal Wrenches. Now this one is 9 sixteenths to inch and a quarter, 5 sixteenths to 11 sixteenths, and then this tiny, tiny little guy here, 3 sixteenths to 7 sixteenths. So <clears throat> this is what replaced a bunch of open end uh, wrenches. And what you do is just get a um, impact uh, extension bar. And these fit on the end 
or in the side, and then you can use a socket up here, your other socket up there. So if you'd be turning, you know, like this. And <clears throat> I was always skeptical of, you know, this kind of stuff, but these are actually quite stout and, and very high quality. They're very heavy, uh, nice sharp teeth in there. So I've tested them out before I took them on the trail and they seem to work great. So uh, started dropping off a bunch of box end wrenches. I still have a few here and these are kind of specific to uh, YJ. So you'd have to just decide on your own what you want to have. Um, some of these bigger ones are for suspension pieces and uh, I wanted to be able to you know, whack them with a hammer I've got uh, some gear wrenches here that are for working down in the engine bay, a few specific ones with the swivel end. Uh, that's actually for alternator. There's a bolt that's very difficult to get at without that and uh, a few others like that. All right, this section here I'm calling the universal wrenches. And Again, just this last year, actually, I decided to find uh, some universal wrenches to try out. Uh, this here is an adjustable um, pipe wrench. And again, that really takes a place of a lot of wrenches. As long as, you know, you don't have to have too much torque on it. Uh, I've got a smaller pipe wrench here. Okay, some of these other universal type wrenches here, again, not for hard hammering, but just even to get into an area and get something started. Sometimes it's just nice to have that, that fin wrench, you get it in there and you can get something going. And, you know, even if it's to temporarily get you going off the trail, uh, sometimes that can be good enough. These here are new to the kit. Duratec, these are adjustable box end wrenches. They show you the metric sizes on one side and the Imperial on the other. And these are quite stout. They're very nice quality. This is all hardened steel here. They were not cheap, but again, that replaced probably five pounds of, of box wrenches. chain wrench here which you know again you never know where that can be handy rubber strap wrench oil filter C clamp now that would be used for if you had to do some suspension repair sometimes that uh, you've got to squeeze uh, some items together and to be able to get a bolt in or if you had a leaf spring issue uh, you could use that to um, squeeze leaf springs together uh, for doing a repair We'll get to some other leaf spring items here in a minute. Moving down to my electrical kit. So this is just a self-contained plastic box. I just slide it under the seat. Has all the basics in there. And uh, for remote soldering, I do use the uh, burns matic little mini torch here with the uh, butane. Uh, also an electrical. You know, multimeter, definitely carry a good one of those. And this is a, you know, circuit tester here, finding ground issues, open circuits, et cetera, et cetera. All right, moving on here to what I call the strapping department. I've got a, a loop ratchet strap here. So this forms a complete loop versus you know, tying something down that's affixed at both ends. So this could be handy for, you know, anything that requires a loop around it, holding firewood to uh, holding up a drive shaft while you work on it. I mean, all kinds of different things. Um, so definitely recommend that. This here is a universal clamp set up here with uh, 7.85 feet and you can make your own hose clamp here out of up to that length it comes with all the pieces 
So invaluable for any, you know, muffler situations. Radiator hose. I don't carry individual radiator hose clamps anymore. I'll just use that. Of course, duct tape. Uh, this here is really strong zip ties. Again, these invaluable for you know, just about a, a huge myriad of things. All right, moving on to the tire and wheel department. I have this Boulder Tools kit here. Now, let's face it, uh, a flat out in the back country on a, a rocky desert road probably is not going to be fixable with this, but this is more for out on the highway, in the parking lots, uh, even helping another motorist, which, you know, is always a nice thing to be able to have stuff to help somebody else out. This here, infrared uh, temperature tester, and I don't really use this much i keep it in the jeep but uh, what it was for was to test the tire temperature that i was getting out there on the trail uh, as you know desert sand can get very hot well over 200 degrees and when you're aired down uh, very low the uh, internal friction of the tires can elevate that temperature and you know you want that temperature to be uh, no more than like 195 is what's recommended. So just curious, you know, testing is uh, all about being prepared and knowing if there is going to be an issue in the future. So, so far, haven't seen any crazy temperatures, but I still keep this around just for checking other things, stuff in the engine bay. You could check if the radiator cap is still hot so you don't open it. Just you know, skin temperature, um, lots of different things there. It doesn't take up any space. I've got the uh, tire uh, valve core removal here and of course extra cores. Colby, I think everyone should have these emergency tire valves. Uh, so basically, you know, you, you catch a tire valve on something and rips it out. You know, this is gonna get you back on the way. Uh, now, of course, you should have your spare tire but when you can just very quickly pop one of these back in and get on your way versus the huge ordeal of trying to get your giant spare tire off I, I think I'll go with that lastly I have this Lincoln quick shake pump here which is a siphoning device so this would be if you want to transfer from your jerry can that's maybe up high on a carrier or maybe on your roof and you just don't have the energy or the uh, wherewithal to take the can down, what have you. Or if someone else is trying to help you out, they don't feel like taking their can down. You can say, hey, look, I got this cool little siphon. You pop this thing in there, shake it up and down. It starts the flow going into your can. Um, you can't use this in from a gas tank to a gas tank. If you poke this down inside your gas tank, uh, you're going to get stuck or maybe you'll catch it on your internal fuel pump or the float in there cause all kind of trouble. So you uh, would use this from a can to can or a can to uh, your tank or someone else's tank. So <clears throat> all of these items here below this broom would go into a, a different tub and everything up above here fits in this uh this is a harbor freight i think they call it 18 inch but all the tools here everything here up above the broom there uh, fits into that bag and i put that down on the front passenger floor to help balance out some of the weight so hope you enjoyed seeing my tool kit if you see anything there that you have a question on where i got it how does it work or if you see anything you feel like i am missing or I have too much of, feel free to comment below. Always love to hear what other people have in their kits. Thanks for watching again. Thanks for subscribing, hitting like buttons, and we'll see you in the next video.